Hi guys, Jordan with Motion Array, and today we're going to be taking a look at how to use our Long Shadow plugins for Premiere Pro. So let's jump right into it. Okay, so let's start by going down to our effects panel and looking through the video effects folder. Here you should find another folder called Motion Array. If you don't have this folder, or if you haven't installed our Long Shadow plugin yet, then you can check out this video here, where we detail that process. And I'll link to it in the description below. But once you've got it, it works pretty similar to any other effect. Just drag it and drop it onto your footage to begin using it. I'm actually going to be placing it on some text to show you how it works more easily. Once you place it, you might notice that there's a red X over top of it. If that's the case, don't worry, all you have to do is highlight the piece of footage with the plugin, and then go up to this box here in your effect controls panel. When you click it, you can sign into your Motion Array account, and as long as you have an active paid Motion Array subscription, this plugin will be active. So, now that you've got this effect started, let's go over how to get the most out of it. You can see that it's pretty simple out of the gate. When you first place down it on your clip, you can see that it gives a pretty nice shadow effect. Now, its primary goal isn't to create a realistic looking black shadow behind your footage, there is already a Premiere Pro effect for that purpose. You can use it in a similar way if you want to, but it's really more for a stylistic effect. The primary difference with this effect is that it doesn't detach from the rest of your object that you've placed it on. And you can additionally control how long or short the shadow distance is. To start to play around and edit your effect, highlight your layer with this effect and then go up to Effect Controls. Here you should see at the bottom all the different parameters that you can use to influence this effect. Amount, Angle, Opacity, and Color. Let's start with Amount. This refers directly to how long or short the actual shadow will appear. By default it's set to 200, but you can take it all the way down to 0, and all the way up to a point where it passes through the edge of the frame. Next up is Angle, which, just like you'd imagine, changes the angle at which the shadow is cast. By default it's set to 130 degrees, but you can input any angle or multiple of values, but we'll get back to that a little bit later. Opacity is pretty simple. It will just influence how transparent or opaque your shadow is. And finally we have color, which you can click on and select the specific color of your choice. If you need an incredibly specific color, you can input a hexadecimal color value, or click on the eyedropper here and select a particular color that you've already got an image of. Or to keep color palette consistency with the rest of your footage, you can select a color from within your frame. But even though that's all the parameters that you have access to, that's far from the only thing that you can do with this effect. One of the biggest elements of control that you can utilize is keyframing these values. By clicking on the stopwatches so that they turn blue, you can activate them to keyframe any changes you make over time. You can do this for length, angle, and opacity. And for angle, you can not only choose different angles, but you can choose multiple of different angles if you want it to spin around. But you might not realize that you can actually keyframe color values as well. By activating keyframing for color, choosing one color value, and then selecting a different color value at a later point in time, you can actually see your colors change over time. Amazing, right? You can also stack these long shadow effects in tandem so that they play off of each other. And by changing the color, you can tell them apart pretty easily, or just create a really stylistic look. Changing the values of one will actually influence all the others down the line. But right now, we've only been showing examples with text. That's because when you place it on a normal piece of footage, it doesn't do anything. There's no room for the shadow to be cast and shown. But that doesn't mean you can't use it on your normal footage. Start by duplicating your footage by clicking and dragging it while holding Alt or Option. Then place it directly above itself. Next up, what you need to do is decide what you want to cast a shadow from. For me, it's pretty obvious I want to cast a shadow from the Big Ben Tower here. Then on the top layer, create a mask that traces around your object, and set the mask feather to zero. Finally, once the mask is created, you can test it to see if it's the way you want by hiding the bottom layer here, just to see your mask. Once you're happy with it, reactivate the bottom layer, and from here you're going to go to the top clip and nest it. Right click and select nest. Name it whatever you want. And once it's nested, you can place down the long shadow effect on this nested clip. And you can see how it interacts with your footage. Play around with animating and stacking these long shadow plugins to create some awesome effects. And guys, that's just an overview of how you can get the most out of our long shadow effect plugin from Motion Array. 
I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, as always, we have tons of other tutorials right here at MotionArray.com. We have tutorials for Premiere Pro, After Effects, and even filmmaking in general. Check it out! But that's it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I can't wait to see you in the next video.